160. He's gone. What's up, everybody? We're back here uh, at the garage with another new project. It seems like we're getting a new project all the time, but uh, this is something that I wanted for for a pretty long time. I've never never owned a four x four four wheel drive vehicle of any sort. I've never owned a uh, a Jeep. And for a while, I was looking for uh, like first generation Broncos and couldn't really find anything that you know made sense for the money and and was uh, wasn't just a rotted piece of shit. And then I came across this puppy. This is a 1979 CJ7. Uh, it's fairly rarely optioned in the sense that it's got a 304 AMC V8, a four speed, and the Dana 20 uh, transfer case. Came with the uh, factory installed 8274 uh, Warren winch here, tow bar, and the interesting thing about this Jeep is that it sat for about 10 years in a mechanic shop after the previous owner built them on uh, about a $5,000 bill and they rebuilt the brakes, the engine, transmission, a whole bunch of stuff for them. And he just kind of noped out of it. And so I ended up picking this thing up for a song. And so we're going to be uh, working on it slowly but surely, uh, kind of as finances allow. And so today's kind of the first day of that. And my goal immediately is to see if we can get it running. Uh, it runs and drives, but it won't stay running. you got to stay on the gas all the time. So we're going to see if we can get the carburetor sorted out and um, then kind of begin going around it. I want to strip it down. There's a few small rust holes I need to take care of. Uh, there's some uh, some electronics and stuff that are kind of questionable. And so I want to get everything I can off of it, out of it, get the roll cage out of it. And uh, so we can kind of figure out what we need to do and make a game plan. So that's what today is going to be about. So uh, let me move the camera around and see if we can get this thing fired up for you guys. As many of you know, the single most important part of owning a Jeep is taking the doors off. So that's what we're going to do first. As far as I can tell, it's just some pins, got a punch and a hammer. Now, as you can see, we got everything out of the Jeep, and you might say, you know, what's the uh, what's the point of doing all this? You know, why don't you just focus on the motor, focus on the trans, or focus on whatever, getting a lift on it, and some other shit. Whenever you get a new project like this, I mean, you can throw big bucks at it, but the truth is, you know, the first mods, the first things you do, should be undoing all the shit that the previous guy fucked up, and a lot of times, a lot of that is free. Like, uh, this is a factory CJ roll bar. And this is some booger welded bullshit, like exhaust piping somebody put on. And so we're gonna get this all cleaned out here. And the next uh, thing is I wanna get all of this out and we're probably gonna have to plasma cut this out. And you know, eventually I'm gonna build a full cage for it, but this garbage, like it just gets in the way and it's not gonna, not gonna protect you. This is like fucking pipe. So sometimes the best mods in the world are free. There we go. See, it's uh, much cleaner. Now, next step, of course, is to power wash the inside of this tub and the outside of the Jeep and just kind of get as much crud off of it as I can. 
Squeaky clean! Alright, so I got the rear hoop out and we got pretty lucky. Of all the bolts, there's only one right there that I had to cut out. The other ones actually came right out with the impact gun. You can see I left this thing still in here, but you can see how much that's flexing. I really don't like the way it's designed. It's going to be in the way of getting out the dash and stuff. And so that's coming out and going in the scrap yard. This, however, is the factory CJ roll bar, and it's in really good shape. Uh, and so as you can see, I just took a sawzall and cut through this, but we're going to actually plasma gouge out all these boogers and, uh, and grind this guy smooth and true again. But part of the reason you want to take all this stuff out when you're doing stuff like this is when you look underneath the mounts, it's like, oh look, we found a little tiny rust spot. And you might say, oh well Max, it's like, just drill that out and weld it. Well, you can just drill it out and weld it, but it's important to know that it's there so that you can take care of it. And if I hadn't taken the roll bar out, I wouldn't have known it was there. Um, the other thing is, I'm pretty sure we're going to find some more rust under these. Now, what these guys did was they bolted them in, but then they also welded them. And then they've gotten rust welded, and that's just, just not wanting to come out. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get the plasma out here, and we're just going to plasma cut the fuck all out of this. Basically cut off all the bolt heads, and so we can remove this assembly. And figure out what we're going to do with the, uh, with the plates. Well, to answer the question of why we do this, couldn't see this hole before, couldn't see all that res damage in there before. Now, if I bring you around to the uh, the other side, see all that right there, that cab corner? It's all rusted to shit. And the way they had this done is they had, uh, let me see if I can find one down here. Uh, that's going to be super hot or not. Ooh, yeah, that's super hot, but... You get a general idea of what it was. It was just some washers and uh, a nut holding it down on the back side. And it's kind of a janky way to do it. So we're going to cut all that out, weld in new, uh, new floors and stuff where it needs to be, basically repair all the rust. And then when I eventually make a full cage for this thing, um, we will do a better job of welding in base plates and making it a, a more permanent uh, fixture. And, you know more structurally sound it needs to be tied into the uh into the frame uh to be correct because you can see all this sheet metal it just it's 18 gauge sheet metal and if you roll a vehicle over on it, it's just gonna go and it's gonna be done ski well after more grinding and plasma cutting and grinding and plasma cutting uh, there we go back to clean shiny metal so what i'll do is i'm gonna spray paint this just uh with primer for now just in the spot we did so it won't rust um, and then eventually we're going to repaint this whole thing in rhino lining. I just, uh, for now, I just don't want it to rust. There we go. Looking just like new. A little bit of, a little bit of spray on primer. Keep it from rusting. And be good to go until I get around to, uh, wire wheeling and, uh, coating this thing. Well, as is the case on most projects, right, it's, uh, worse than I'd hoped, better than I expected. So, if we take a look around... Here's uh, kind of this front area. Got some rust holes here, up underneath the uh, the clutch and the brake. Got a few small holes here. This area is pretty good and rotted. This area is pretty bent in. Got obviously our big rust spot right there. Here in the back looks like got away with just some surface rust here. I hit it with the uh, with the screwdriver pretty good, and the only thing that gave way was a little bit right here, and so we'll just kind of patch that. 
Um, moving around to the sides here. This was pretty solid, just some surface rust. Uh, over here we found our one little pinhole, but otherwise we're okay. This was the worst area right here. So you can see that the top of this tub just kind of gave way in a bunch of places. And the way that you test this is I normally take like a cold punch chisel or something and you just kind of go around and, and smack it like that. And if it just kind of, you know, comes off with just surface scale rust, like right there you can tell it's solid. Right, because it doesn't, you don't have to hit it hard, just enough, because I mean, it's just punctured, like, like, see, and there's nothing really to it. So, the only concern here is that it's got these threaded uh, holes right here. And so we'll see, I'll, you can get uh, entire, like, replacement tub pieces. I mean, hell, you can get an entire replacement tub if you want, but you can get, like, floor panels that are 18 gauge, um, and I might buy them because they have these ridges already uh, creased in them and then basically just cut out the pieces I need and weld them in because I believe they come in the whole tub is like four separate pieces obviously the factory tub is solid but the, you can buy like that one that one that one and that one and so we'll probably end up buying you know maybe all four maybe three of the four the other thing is you can be cheap you can just go buy yourself a 4x8 sheet of like uh, 18 gauge steel this thing is 18 gauge steel um, and then just kind of do all the uh, all the patchwork yourself. <laughs> Woo! Look at that. So that explosion right there was this compressed air hose from China fucking finally letting go. <laughs> what junk. So yeah, you can buy real replacement pieces, you can just get some 18 gauge steel and kind of hammer it out yourself, or there's a group of people who are like, hey, it's an old rusty Jeep, it's supposed to have uh, speed holes in it, and you know, you know, even holes like that or whatever, you know, they're not structural, they're not structural, and so, I mean, here I'd probably replace this because it's got, the, it's holding the tower in, but uh, you know, it's welded to the frame under there. But, you know, like that hole over there, it's not structural, and, you know, there's a lot of people that will just say, you know, fuck it, and go on about their day. Now, we got it all stripped out, now we can, uh, at least potentially remove this window, remove, uh, the dash, and see what the, um, what the wiring looks like underneath. Hey, look, the windshield falls down. I'm like a real Jeep boy.